Hello and welcome back again to the 30 day diet and lifestyle challenge with me, Julie from World Wellness Weekend. So today I want to talk a little bit more about those calories that we mentioned yesterday. Um, although it may work for some people, I am not a great fan of calorie counting because it kind of implies for me a like restriction. And I believe that uh, we perceive it as like deprivation. So automatically we could find ourselves uh, using the language of like, I'm not allowed or I can't have that, um, which is actually not sustainable. So I'd rather focus on getting a better relationship with calories, knowing what they are, uh, where we are getting them from and how to use them, then maybe you'll want to make different choices. Now, remember, as I said yesterday, that a calorie is just a unit of energy. So your, your car doesn't run uh, on fumes and neither can the body. You know, we need energy from our food just to keep our bodies running, our hearts beating, our lungs breathing, our brains churning and all those chemical reactions that I did talk about yesterday. So just sitting here right now, perhaps listening to me, you are already using up some of the calories that you consume today. Then in addition to that, depending on how active you've been, you'll be needing more energy and therefore uh, using um, a few more of those calories. I mean, even the act of eating itself means that some of the calories uh, from the food will actually be used up for that whole digestion and eating process. So whatever the body does not want, it's going to store. So let's look at some of that energy source. So the, the energy source that perhaps we're most familiar with is glucose. This is in, the, in, in, in a form that we can store in our body. Um, and then we have the fats as well. Those are basically our two main energy currencies. So glucose that gets stored as something else called glycogen and fats. And really, um, there's only a certain amount of glycogen that we can store and it's mainly stored in our liver or our muscles. And um, it's really easy to access, but there's not really much there. So what happens then to that glucose? So it gets transformed into fat and that gets stored. So um, think about the glycogen or this, this glucose that's running around because it's, it, when it's stored, it's stored as glycogen. But think about it as the money in your current account. And like, um, let's talk about now the, 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 the fat. Uh, the, the body fat is an efficient way to store energy but it's not really accessible. So think about that like the, uh, like think about the, like the body fat as the money in your savings account that you've locked away uh, for a rainy day. And another thing that's really important is to know that not all calories are created equal. You know, we can get different amounts of energy from those three macronutrients that I talked about from the proteins, the fats and the carbohydrates. Plus those empty calories I talked about uh, from highly processed foods and drinks as well, they're also gonna be giving you uh, um, a kind of energy, uh, and, you know, but mostly those kind of things are really loaded with unhealthy fats and sugars. So, as I said yesterday, they don't often have what we call a nutritional benefit. But what we can also look at is the difference in the calories that would make you feel fuller. So we have those foods that are what we call energy dense and usually contain lots of fat, sugar and starch, but they have very little fiber and water. Whereas low energy dense foods contain lots of water, protein, fiber and very little fat, and they're also low in sugar. So, for example, let's look at 400 calories worth of vegetables. They are going to give you a greater sense of being full and feeling satisfied than 400 calories from a bag of crisps. 
In terms of calories, we would then need to eat much more of the energy dense food. So we'd have to eat a lot more chips or crisps, as we call them in England, um, to get the same feeling of fullness than if we'd had our veggies. So you see what I'm, what I'm getting at here? Because that means that probably we overeat because we're not feeling satisfied and full. So the more bulk means the fewer calories and um, that can be a kind of a helpful way to sort of if you're looking to lose some weight is to think about bulking up more on things like those uh, foods which have the fiber and the water in them. Um, so let's say that we could be switching from a high calorie density diet to a low energy density, more plant-based, let's say, diet, um, because then you would be consuming perhaps even less than four to 800 fewer calories a day without actually, uh, let's say, consciously restricting the amount of food that you eat. So I say it's all about perception, isn't it? So uh, when we eat, we've got these receptors inside us that tell us that we're full. So if we're eating a lot of calories, but we're not getting those messages that we're full, then we're just going to keep on wanting to keep on eating. Um, and finally, just because I've talked about it being a, a slow energy dense does not mean that it's a, a low nutrient dense. Uh, it's quite the opposite. Um, if you feel that lately your diet has been a bit more tipped towards the high energy dense scale, then switching to meals where your vegetables are the star performers will not only help the waistline, but will also give your vitality levels a greater boost. So make your goal this week to have half your plate full of veggies. And if veggies is something that you really struggle with, um, then try to aim to introduce one new veggie this week. Look into the different ways to, uh, to, um, to, to, to serve it up. Look at the different ways maybe to cook it. There are lots of recipes out there you can try on the internet. Um, take the time to discover as well a taste for it because you might have to have it two or three times to really get to like it. And tomorrow I'll be talking about the controversial subject of carbs. Mm -hmm.